Uh, Tom Stoy, I do want to wish you well in your new role. Um, but in your new role uh, as Foreign Affairs Minister in a neutral country, what do you intend to do to um, send that message of neutrality, uh, particularly around uh, the conflict and war in Ukraine? And as most people have seen, this is a brutal, brutal war carried out by a brutal regime. I want to thank the Deputy for, for his comments and for raising this issue. Uh, while Ireland is a military neutral country, uh, meaning that we do not participate in a military alliance or a common or mutual defence pact or arrangements, we are not politically uh, or morally neutral uh, in response to Russia's unprovoked aggression um, against Ukraine. Ireland strongly condemns the ongoing despicable and indiscriminate missile and drone attacks against civilian targets across Ukraine, which are having a devastating impact on Ukraine's energy and other, other critical civilian infrastructure. The sole aim of such attacks is to terrorize the Ukrainian population. This exacerbates the already challenging humanitarian situation in Ukraine, with millions displaced and in the context of a harsh winter. These attacks constitute another unacceptable escalation of the war, and civilians are paying the highest price those responsible must be held to account. During our tenure on the United Nations Security Council, we clearly, consistently and unambiguously called on Russia to end its aggression, comply with its obligations under international law, and withdraw all its forces unconditionally from the entirety of the sovereign internationally recognized territory of Ukraine. Ireland will continue to use its voice, including at European Union level and in relevant multilateral fora, to call on the Russian Federation to end its illegal war against the people of Ukraine, to withdraw its forces and engage in genuine dialogue and diplomacy towards um, peace. We have received President Zelensky's 10-point peace plan and have been studying it closely. We will reflect on how Ireland might best contribute to its objectives. We are already involved in many of the area it covers, including food security, accountability and nuclear safety. We are grateful to the United Nations and other partners for their ongoing efforts. We know there's only one way to end the suffering in Ukraine, and that is for Russia to end its illegal war, withdraw its forces from the territory of Ukraine, and restore peace. Or Margaret, talk to And talk to Kenny and I'll know me one. I won't be, obviously, you know, I won't mince my words, and I don't think anybody minced their words in this chamber. Uh, Putin is a war criminal. Uh, the crimes he has committed over the past year against the Ukrainian people is tantamount uh, to war crimes, akin to what uh, Nazi Germany were doing to most of Europe and Russia. Uh, he has caused untold suffering to the Ukrainian people, and the resistance by Ukrainian people has been heroic to uh, the detriment of thousands of people, uh, both Ukrainian and Russian soldiers. Uh, but Putin is uh, fixated on causing this conflict. But alarm bells start ringing, uh, Tornister, when you see NATO um, sending in hundreds of tanks. And what, you know, the, I suppose what the kind of fear is, is that this conflict could literally escalate into something that's uncontrollable. And what that uncontrollable, well, what could mean, it could be NATO versus Russia. Can and that's a different, completely different kettle of fish. First of all, I appreciate the Deputy's comments and the bona fide nature of them um, in respect of um, Putin's conduct of the war. And Russia needs to be held to account, and that's why Ireland supports uh, an international uh, uh, tribunal to, to bring Russia to account in terms of the crime of aggression and war crimes are being committed. But um, it's, it was disappointing, for example, in, in the European Parliament last week that two Irish uh, MEPs refused to support a resolution uh, to establish such a tribunal uh, on, on, on the crime of aggression. Um, members Wallace and, and, and Claire Daly went against that. Uh, I was shocked to see that. About 472 MPs, uh, MEPs went for it. And on the NATO, uh, the NATO leaders did everything they could to stop this war. They didn't want this war. Um, Chancellor Schultz, President Macron, President Macron went to, to, to Moscow. He pleaded with Putin not to go to war. Um, they did not want to war. They would love the war to end. 
Um, I'm quite honest, yep. But Ukraine, the UN Charter gives you the, you know, Please. the right to self-defence. That's what's involved here, unfortunately. And Dr. Kenny, no matter what. I, I, Tom, sir, I just looking at the past year and how the evolution of this conflict will go. Um, who knows where it will end? And with kind of more escalation, more kind of heavy weaponry. Um, in relation to the tanks that have been provided by uh, West, the Western Alliance, somewhere, somewhere, somewhere is going to have to say, look, at, where are we going with this conflict? Is it escalation or de-escalation? Wars all end. Um, but this war has the potential to escalate into a situation that could go beyond the borders of Ukraine. Um, and when you provide heavenly weaponry, such as uh, uh, US, the US, Germany and France have done, um, one would really wonder about uh, how this war is going to end, where it will end, and actually Ireland's uh, stance on, on its neutrality itself. So I think air even neutrality has been questioned. Uh, air neutrality, Ireland's neutrality, has been questioned over the last year about our stance particularly on Ukraine. And if you look at Ireland's neutrality, sure, protect, neutrality, particularly around Shannon Airport. Take Ireland Please, To the best of my knowledge, the only country to question Ireland's neutrality last year was Russia. And, that, and, and, and in my view, Russia has zero credibility in that regard. Um, see, we're, we're military neutral. We're not politically neutral. We're members of the European Union. We're members of the United Nations. The UN Charter, very strong on self-defence. Ukraine is entitled to defend itself against appalling aggression. Um, every ma ma major leader in Europe went to President Putin before the war and pleaded with him not to go to war, that there was, better, there was dialogue, negotiations. If he was worried about the security architecture of Europe, it could be resolved. Even when the war started and the war continued, President Macron has maintained um, dialogue uh, with, 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 with President Putin. Um, and so has um, German Chancellor. Um, so every effort has always been made right throughout to try and get this war stopped. But Putin has no interest in peace and has shown no interest in peace. He wants to annihilate Ukraine. He wants to make it a puppet regime under his dominance. He doesn't want a democracy um, right alongside him. Um, and all the countries around... Sorry.